Today we're going to talk about uh, maglocks. We're going to talk about what is a maglock and, and what are the applications that they're used in. So what I have here is a spare maglock. It's actually in our, in our junk shelf that we use for testing and, and installing here in the shop. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information on it first and then I'll show you how it kind of works. Um, basically, a maglock consists of the electromagnet, which is this part here, and the armature plate. So the armature plate mounts on the physical door and the magnet mounts to the frame above the door. And then as the door meets, the magnet pulls the two together, right? This is the electromagnet. This is the armature plate. Those are the two pieces of a maglock. Um, when the electromagnet gets power, right? Whether it's 12 volt or 24 volt, it can be working in both different applications. Uh, when it gets power, it creates a magnetic flux, and uh, that magnetic flux causes the armature plate uh, to be attracted to the electromagnet, so that whenever the door meets up, you want this to be centered, and the door meets up, it, you'll see it get close, and then it'll go, and it'll pull together like that. And you do not want to have your fingers in between that when it does that. <clears throat> so, uh, how this mounts on the door basically is on, on the side of the door that's going to meet the magnet. The magnet mounts up to the top of the frame. Sometimes you have spacer plates to bring it down, or if it's on a gate, you might have a different type of Z bracket or some kind of L bracket or some sort so that you can mount that. They're used on gates sometimes to hold a gate closed or at the top of the door, this would go on the top of the frame, this would go on the door. Um, and then on the door side, you would drill a hole where this goes through the door with a sex bolt holding it on with like a rubber uh, washer that lets it kind of move side to side a little bit because you need it to have a little play in it on the armature plate. And then you have these two posts that are just literally sitting in a hole. Uh, so it allows it to kind of move just a little bit to adjust. And this is mounted to the frame and they come together and they lock. Usually there's two different, the two most common, I'll say, I don't know if what else, there may be additional ones out there, but the two most common uh, ratings on them is a 600 pound and a 1200 pound electromagnet. So the 1200 pounds are usually using exterior doors because you don't want some big old guy or a couple of people to start pulling on that door and just force it open. Uh, so there's 1200 and 600. 1200 pound mag locks are used usually on exterior doors and 600 pound mag locks are used in interior doors. Um, and some of them they have that are not just singles like this, some of them are double mags where they have one magnet and another magnet connected. So it's one long double magnet and that mounts the frame and you have both doors with two armature plates come together and they lock into the magnet. So. Uh, that's a maglock and when you're installing maglocks in most places I can imagine I would think most places in the United States are going to require you to get a permit <clears throat> This is just uh, one of many different parts in an access control system You may can use an electric strike, you know, or maglock like this. Those are two most common uh, parts that are activated uh, Whenever you get an appropriate credential a badge or a fingerprint or a code It's either going to release the magnet or activate the electric strike so uh, permitting is a thing that you need to usually do. The reason being is, if, you know, if you're trying to get out of the building quick and there's a 1,200 pound magnet holding you from getting the door open, that's a pretty big fire risk, uh, fire hazard, sorry. So, um, we'll make a video too, eventually showing you like what the process is to get a permit for one of these things. But anyway, that's what, the, the, uh, what a mag lock is. Uh, the first one was invented in 1969 <clears throat> by um, Sumner Sa Safferstein, is his name. That's how you say it. And uh, it was for a Montreal forum. And uh, the guy who actually created that ended up creating a company called Locknetics, which had the first mag lock, which has been sold to other companies multiple times and moved around. But Locknetics is actually one of the major brands now that we sell under Allegion. Allegion is a partner and Allegion manufactures brands like Schlage and a bunch of different products. And Locknetics is one of their popular brands. So uh, we sell most of the mag locks we sell, ironically, are actually Locknetic mag locks now. So, it's come full circle because I never, when I first started the trade, I never, there wasn't a Locknetics mag lock. They actually, uh, Schlage and Dexter and Locknetics are some of the major brands now that, that um, Allegiant has brought up. So we sell a lot of Locknetic parts now. So anyway, so mag lock, uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit more information on it. Uh, it does need to require constant power to stay closed, for the door to stay closed. So. Um, like uh, on another video I talked about uh, electric strikes, how they normally open, and then when they get power, they release and move. Well, on a maglock, they constantly have power, so it's a normally closed circuit. 
and whenever you either present your correct credential, a badge, or a fingerprint, or whatever, it'll open the circuit and allow you to open the door. Now, uh, you could, let's see, usually when you do a maglock, that's just one of many parts, but especially if you're gonna have to do permitting and everything on a maglock, you're gonna have to have the maglock, and on the inside, you're gonna have to have two other ways to, to disengage, two ways to disengage that maglock. One is you could hit a request to exit button on the wall, so we usually have to wire in a, a rex button or a request to exit button. You hit that button, it releases the maglock for three or four seconds. You open the door and exit and it locks back. <clears throat> or, and actually in combination with that, you have to have the Rex button and a motion sensor at the top of the door. So as I'm walking to the door, it senses a motion, it releases the maglock, I just exit and then it locks behind me. The only reason why that button is on the wall is if for some reason that motion sensor malfunctions, you have a release button that you can hit on the wall and release the maglock. So they come in 600 pounds and 1200 pounds. There's also double mags. There's many different brackets to mount them in different situations. So uh, this is just one important component of an access control system. So hopefully, uh, oh, one other thing too. So in, usually when we're tying these into access control systems, <clears throat> we leave the mechanical override key lock on the door because what if power goes out? Well, then your magnet's not gonna lock that door. So usually if you have full power failure at a building, you may have a battery backup or something to to back it up for maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes in case you know, it doesn't come up instantly. But in the event of you get total power failure across the building, you would need to go and activate your manual locks and lock those doors so that no one can get in. So anyway, hope you, hopefully you learned a little bit about what mag locks are and then what they're used in. Um, we like to put out constant content for you. We try to make it relevant content. We try to make sure that it's interesting for you too. Hopefully this has been interesting and hopefully you've learned something. Um, thanks for tuning into our channel. Uh, we have another uh, YouTube channel we've been working really hard on. It's called Eudropreneur. I'll have Randall put a link in here or something, and uh, we can uh, you can click on that YouTube channel, and take a look at that content. That's other other content. It's a whole different channel with a whole different spin on everything. It's basically business topics, things like that. But if you want to check it out, it's Eudropreneur. U D R O P R E N E U R. Thanks for tuning in. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, Instagram, all the social media platforms. Please follow us on those. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon for notifications. And we appreciate the support as always.